Implications for self. Special relativity doesn't just redefine our picture of reality. It alters the concept of ourselves, as temporary beings moving through time. It makes us question whether we can even make any decisions at all. Do we have free will? The ideas of determinism, free will, predestination, foreknowledge, and omniscience have historically been deeply intertwined. Can we exercise a free will when the future is predetermined? What about when future events already exist in spacetime? Differences of opinion on such questions have even caused divisions between different religious sects and denominations. For instance, Calvinists believe that God knows in advance who is destined for salvation and damnation. Other denominations believe only in predestination of those destined to be saved. The question of whether we have free will, and whether free will is compatible with determinism or foreknowledge is nuanced. For a detailed consideration see, our episode Do Humans Have Free Will? Religion and Special Relativity Various religions have supposed things about reality and time that aren't far off from the ideas of special relativity. Relativity of Viewpoints Within Jainism is a doctrine known as Anikantavada meaning the relativity, and multiplicity of views. It is the idea that there is no absolute viewpoint of reality. Rather reality can be perceived differently according to different points of view. Jains also believe that the universe is uncreated and eternal. Existence of all times and events. In Hinduism, Om, also Om, signifies Brahman, the ground of being. Quote. The unchanging Om is the all. Its expansion is, what has been, what is, what shall be. And what is beyond the three times, is also Om. For all this is the eternal, and this self is the eternal, and this self has four aspects. End quote. Mandukya Upanishad, circa 200 AD. Religions that consider God to know the future often describe future events as already existing, at least existing within the mind of God. Quote. God, owing to his infallible prescience of the future, has appointed and ordained from eternity all events occurring in time, especially those that directly proceed from, or at least are influenced by, man's free will. End quote. The Catholic Encyclopedia Eternal Life Relativity tells us no single point of view regarding time, space, or motion is more correct than any other. All views are correct, from their own frames of reference. This means the present time is not some fact of the universe, but merely an opinion shared by contemporaries. This fact implies eternal life, and a form of immortality. Caesar still lives. Consider the case of Gork, an alien from Andromeda. Gork owns a fast spaceship that can travel 240 km per second, about 17 times faster than our Voyager space probes. If Gork travels towards the Milky Way his present contains Earth as it will be 2000 years in the future. If Gork's ship is stopped, his present contains Earth as it is today. If Gork's ship travels away from Earth, his present contains Earth as it was 2000 years ago. From Gork's perspective in Andromeda, you could either be 1. Not yet born 2. Alive and reading this article or 3. Long dead. It all depends on which direction his ship is going. How can our present, ancient Rome, and the far future all exist? Only with a four-dimensional reality can we make sense of this. Accordingly we must dispense with the idea that time flows or that there's an objective present. In this revised view, Julius Caesar is alive, He's just in a location 2000 light years behind us in space-time. From Caesar's viewpoint, the present is a little before 0 AD, and none of us are yet born. Our opinion that he is long dead doesn't bother him, 
no more than the opinions of people born in 4000 AD bother us. There exist times long before you were born and times long after you died. But despite the opinions of people in those other times, you are here, alive and well, within the time span of your life. Similarly, those who are dead or are not yet born, from our perspective, feel the same, alive and well in their own times. It's no coincidence the present year happens to be a time during your life, rather than a billion years in the past or future. You will always find yourself in a point in time where you exist. Relativity has brought physicists to this conclusion. Riot Dijk, who proved that relativity requires four-dimensionalism, wrote. Quote. Of course, man is four-dimensional, just like all other organisms and objects. This mere situation implies that there is a life after death, namely, that part of the four-dimensional human being that exists after the moment of his death. End quote. C. W. Ryatijk in Four Dimensional Reality Continued, 2018. Humans have spatial borders. We have a height, breadth, and depth. Humans also have temporal borders. These borders stretch through space-time from one's birthday to the day one dies. A 70-year lifespan extends 70 light years through space-time, forming a long thin spiraled helix, winding 70 times around the sun. That is our true nature, as four-dimensional beings. A tenacious illusion. The common view of time, as something pressing forward, leads many to assume they will cease to exist once this moving present passes beyond the day they die. Relativity reveals this fear to be unsupported, for it implies a perpetual and eternal existence of all locations and times. Fearing that you cease to exist because you have a future temporal border is as silly as fearing you cease to exist because you have spatial borders, or a temporal border in the past. What exists is not just one present moment, but the whole Apple or the entire movie reel, all of space-time. Every moment of the past, present, and future. This view has been expressed by eminent scientists, including Albert Einstein, Hermann Minkowski, Wim Ryatijk, Hilary Putnam, Richard Feynman, Roger Penrose, and Brian Greene. But if before and after are not absolute, what does that imply for the afterlife? What is an afterlife if there is no after? On this question, Einstein revealed his thoughts. Michel Besso was a lifelong friend to Einstein. They met as students in Zurich. Besso helped Einstein get a job at the Swiss patent office. Besso also helped Einstein to develop his ideas. He was the only person Einstein credited in his paper on special relativity. As Einstein lay on his deathbed, approaching his own temporal border, he received word that Besso died. He wrote a letter of consolation to Besso's family, writing in part. Quote, now he has again preceded me a little in parting from this strange world. This has no importance. For people like us who believe in physics, the separation between past, present and future has only the importance of an admittedly tenacious illusion. End quote. Albert Einstein, in a letter to Besso's family, 1955. Einstein departed from this strange world on April 18, 1955. Just weeks after writing that letter. Einstein believed that death has no importance because the difference between the past, present, and future is only an illusion. Many religions promise eternal life. If special relativity is true, you already have it. You exist eternally. Your life is yours forever. Make it a good one.